Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to put it all together in our attempt to find the intensity of a double slit interference pattern. Again, what it comes down to, light is coming down through uh, two slits, the slits are distance d apart, because we're looking at a screen a far distance away equal to L. We see an interference pattern, and we're trying to find the intensity of the light anywhere along that screen, not just where the central maximum is or the bright spots are or where the dark spots are. We want to find the intensity of the light anywhere along the stream as a function of theta. So later on, we're going to find a way to relate the function theta or the angle theta, the direction we look, to the phase angle difference when the two beams come together. Remember, they're not the same angle. In the last video, we found out how to find the, the total electric field strength when two beams come together based upon their phase difference. The phase difference angle is phi, and of course we realize that if the extra distance traveled with the two beams is equal to a fraction of a wavelength, that's it. the phase difference will be that same fraction times 2 pi. So it will be a fraction of a total phase, and therefore, for example, if the extra distance travel is 1 12th of a wavelength, the phase difference would be 1 12th of 2 pi or a 30 degree difference when the two beams get there. We learned in the last video that when there is a difference, let's say, of 30 degrees, what the total electric field strength will be because it's basically a vector addition. We found that the total electric field squared is equal to 4 times the electric field of each individual wave squared times the cosine squared of the phase difference divided by 2. Now, how does that relate to the intensity? Well, here we have an equation that says that the average intensity of any one beam is equal to 1 half epsilon sub naught c times the maximum electric field strength squared. So we could say that I1 is equal to 1 half epsilon sub naught times c times E sub 1 max squared. And we could say the same thing for the second beam, that the intensity of the second beam is equal to 1 half epsilon sub naught c times e of the second beam maximum squared, like that. And of course, if we then add them together, we have to realize that these have the same intensity, same strength, because they come from the same source. So we can say that uh, I1 equals I2 equals I sub 0. So we'll just go ahead and say that that would be the intensity of each individual wave. We can say that's equal to 1 half epsilon sub naught times c times e max squared, where e max is simply the electric field maximum oscillation strength of each of the two waves coming together. So what happens now when we add those together? What if, what if we add I1 plus I2? What does that add, add up to? So I1 plus I2 is equal to the intensity that you see along the way. Now that, of course, will depend upon how the electric field strengths come together, what kind of phase difference you have, and how they're additive. We can already see that that depends on the phase angle. All right, so this will be equal to I, and what would I be equal to? Well, I would depend, of course, not on the individual electric field strength, but on the total electric field strength when you add the two together. So the sum will be equal to 1 half epsilon sub naught times C, and instead of E max for each individual one, we use E total, it'll be the E total squared. All right, so if we now replace E total by what E total is equal to, what do we get? So we get, well, the intensity is equal to 1 half epsilon sub naught times the speed of light times 4 times E max squared times the cosine squared of phi over 2. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this a little bit differently. So you can see, we can write this as I is equal to 4 times the quantity 1 half epsilon sub naught C times E max squared times the cosine squared of phi over 2. All right, now why did I write it like this? There's a very special reason for that. Notice what's inside the brackets. This quantity right here is exactly the same as this quantity right here or this quantity right there, or of course, since they're equal to each other, this quantity right there. So in other words, the thing between the brackets here is the intensity of one or the other beam. So what we're saying is that the intensity of the sum of the two, and let me just, well, it's the intensity. I'll just leave it without the subscript because what we're doing here is simply finding intensity anywhere along the screen, and now we realize that the intensity 
anywhere along the screen is four times the intensity of each individual, individual beam times the cos cosine square of phi over 2. In other words, what I can say is that the intensity is equal to four times the intensity of each individual beam, because that's what this is equal to, times the cosine square of phi divided by 2. Wow! That's what it comes down to. Now, think about it. If I take, for example, this point right here, where the two come together and there's a maximum brightness there at that point, well, that means that at that point, the phase difference would be zero. So, let's say that at this point right there, the intensity at that point would be when the phase angle is equal to zero. Well, let's plug in the zero for the phase angle. The cosine of zero, of course, is one, which means that that location, the intensity here, at that location, the intensity is equal to four times the intensity of each individual beam as it goes through the slits. Well, that seems kind of strange. How can two beams come together and give you four times the intensity? But yet, that's what our equation is telling us. Can that even be possible? The answer is yes. It is true indeed that at this location right there, the maximum intensity of the light when it comes together, and there's no phase difference, they, when the two waves come together and the phase difference is zero, that the intensity here would be four times the intensity of each of the two beams. Well, how do you get four times the intensity out of two beams? Well, actually, the key is in this part of the expression right here. This part of the expression is the cosine square of phi over 2, which means, yes, at th this location you get four times the intensity, but at this location you get zero to intensity. And on average, if you look at any particular point, what is I average? Well, I average would be equal to four times the intensity of each individual beam times the average of this expression right here, the average of the cosine square of phi over 2. And what is the average of the cosine square? Well, if you take the average of the cosine, I need a little board space here, but let's say here's the average of the cosine. The average of the cosine, of course, is zero because you have an equal amount above as below the the horizontal axis. But if you square the cosine, you get something that looks like this. And it turns out that the average of the square of the cosine, so let's say that is the cosine of phi over 2, and this would be the cosine square of phi over 2, and if you take the average of that, whoop, my pen has just died on me. I think there's something wrong with the board down there, so let me get a different color so I can keep writing. So if you want the average at that point, it turns out that's one half the cosine square of phi over 2 max. So that's where we lose half the intensity. The average value of the cosine square of phi over 2 is equal to one half the cosine square over 2. So this is equal to 4 times the intensity times one half times the cosine square of phi over 2 max, like that. And of course, the one half cancels out with that. And we can say, well, that means that this is actually equal to 2 times I sub naught on average. So, no mystery there. We're not getting extra light out of nowhere just because two beams come together. It just means that where we have our maximum values. When the two beams come together, the intensity is four times the intensity of each individual beam. That's because on other places it goes to zero, and on average, the average intensity across the screen is twice the intensity of each beam, which is what we would expect. And that's how we add the two beams together with a phase difference, and that's how we find the intensity as a function of the phase difference. So once we calculate the phase difference between the two beams, and of course the phase difference can be realized by understanding what the extra distance traveled is, what a fraction of the total wavelength that extra path length is, that's the same fraction of the quantity 2 pi radians, which is a full phase, or 360 degrees, so 1 12th of 2 pi is pi over 6, or 1 12th of 360 degrees is 30 degrees. Of course, I just took an example, 1 12th, it could be any fraction, and that's how you find the phase difference. You plug that in here, and that will tell you the intensity as a function of the phase difference in terms of the intensity of each individual wave. 
If you want to know what the intensity of each individual wave is, well, then you calculate it like this. So the intensity of each one wave is equal to one half epsilon sub naught c times the electric field strength quantity squared. And that's how we find the intensity anywhere along the screen as a function of the phase difference of the two beams when they come together in an interference pattern.